There's no better way to start my day than to mess with my girl Ivy, the anaconda. But she's a little bit difficult because she's in this corner right here. Don't know if I'm going to be able to get her. Oh, she is so strong. I tell you, she's getting big. But look at how beautiful she looks. She just shed out just in the last couple days. And her colors are probably better than I've ever seen. So I have to take her out and have a little time with her. Come on, baby girl. I love this girl more than any snake I've ever owned in my entire Come life. Come on, but oh my gosh, get her out myself. This is a big snake. There you go, girl. Up you go. On the ground, girl. Look at that snake right there. Watch out, where are you going, buddy? Tell you, right when a snake like this is not easy, but it's awesome that she's so mellow. And I've had my run-ins with a couple of anacondas that weren't quite as big as Ivy, but definitely cantankerous. Come on, girl. But thankfully, she's just an absolute puppy dog. And you guys know that I love anacondas. They're just an animal I talk about all the time. And the truth is, my love of anacondas started when I was a teenager. There was a guy named Eric Larson that used to come into the pet shop. And he had a couple green anacondas that were literally as big as Ivy, maybe even a little bit bigger, to be totally honest with you. And I actually had the pleasure of working with them for a week or two when he was on vacation. Brought him over to my house. I kept up. I played with him every day. There was actually a situation where I fed him and it missed the rabbit, the frozen rabbit, and grabbed my pant leg. Boiled me. I had to call my friend. He had to drive like five miles to get over as quick as he could because I couldn't get the anaconda off my leg. And she was just trying to eat. You know, it was no big deal. I couldn't get the anaconda off my leg. No big deal. But I still always fell in love with them and I think they're absolutely amazing. Of course, my first anacondas I ever had were actually yellow anacondas, not green anacondas like my girl Ivy here. Of course, they stay a little smaller, like maybe 10 foot, something like that. And I actually bred the yellow anacondas for like three or four years. They were a little bit bitey, I'm not gonna lie, they were dirty. And I always said I wanted to get it green anacondas. But for a long time, Lori just wouldn't let me get them. Anacondas. Lori, what if I was to tell you that I was gonna get another anaconda? Now, why do you have problem with the anacondas? Okay, that's way too many questions. So, First question, no. You no. already have enough. No, but it's a different type of anaconda. No. This one's unique, one of a kind. No. They're a very large snake. It takes up a lot of room. Why did it take you like 15, 20 years before you let me have my first anaconda? Because we didn't have the room for it. Now your room that you have is already full Well, there's of one anacondas. more anaconda that I, I, I'm looking at that's no. really good. Don't do it. Unless you're going to replace one. That's not fair. I'm done. All right. Which one are we replacing? None. What there are might replacing? be another anaconda coming, though. No. There Better might not be. be. Might be. Better not be. Might be. Let me tell you something about anacondas that most people don't understand. As cool as they are. And don't get me wrong, I love the snakes. Especially the green anacondas. I never thought I'd be working with them, let alone get to clean them every day. But that's the one thing I want to talk about. We clean them every day. From the filter, to the water, to the glass, to the poop and the pee. Anacondas are by far one of the messiest snakes I have ever worked with. And that is saying something. And the only snake I've ever owned that goes back in her cage all by herself. She's just like, you know what? I'm done, Dad. I want to go hang out back in my cage. You don't love anacondas. There's got to be something and wrong. Finally, with you. guys, after 20 something years, I was able to convince Lori we got our first baby green anaconda. All right, guys. Here is my super special package. All right, here we go. Oh my gosh. I am so excited about this. Okay, deep breaths, Brian. Deep breaths. Oh, oh my gosh. Here it is, guys. Oh my gosh. That's right. It's a captive born green anaconda. Just take a look at how amazing that animal is. I have a little advice for you. This is a little friendly Brian Barczyk advice for your relationship. When goal. you get a shipment in like this, don't leave the empty box laying around because then something bad happens. What was in the box? I'm going to have to show Hello, her. Hello, mister. Are you kidding me right now? Oh, it's my dream animal, Lori. I've always wanted one. You've always wanted e That's right, Verde was my first green anaconda. And she's starting to finally get big. The thing about anacondas is the first couple years, they hardly grow because they're a little bit finicky. She took like six months before she ate anything. And then if you guys remember, she was only eating live chicks. Then she ate frozen chicks. Then ultimately she switched over to rodents, which is now where she's at. And she's starting to really put on size. But they'll go from this size to like Ariana size pretty quickly. And then Ariana's to Ivy size pretty quickly. Quickly. So she's at that stage where she's gonna absolutely explode inside. And she's still my baby. As much as I love Ivy, and she is definitely my favorite snake. This is definitely a second almost favorite snake, right? Because this was my first one, and she is absolutely a puppy dog. When she gets to Ivy size, she's gonna be incredible. But I was a little bit impatient, and one day I actually got a call from someone that had a relatively decent sized anaconda for sale. So we geared up and we headed down to Atlanta. And I am hopefully gonna be acquiring an 11 foot anaconda.
get to work tomorrow. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's go check out this anaconda. This is a really cool area. Obviously dog tame. I mean, look at her. She's deep in blue. <laughs> Unbelievably gorgeous. I am over the top excited. This girl is going home with us. She is a gorgeous animal. And again, she's in shed. That freaking slow tongue movement. Color, the pattern on this animal. I am over the moon. I mean, this is absolutely an incredible animal. Get her kind of habituated to things and eventually be able to let other people enjoy her as much as I do. And that's when I finally got my girl Ivy. But the thing was is that now I had a bigger anaconda and I always wanted to produce them. I had produced yellow anacondas before. I thought one day I want to produce green anaconda. It was kind of a huge accomplishment for me. And then I ended up getting Ariana, which was actually named Aries at the time because we thought it was a boy. Turned out that Ariana was a girl. So my dreams of producing anacondas with two females, that wasn't too realistic. Or was it? We had a baby anaconda born. This baby green anaconda is the first that I've ever had. Ivy did not have baby. That's right. And this story actually started last night. So we're actually open here tonight at the Reptarium, and guess what? Our male anaconda, Aries, happens to be eating something kind of interesting. Now, of course, you remember that I didn't understand why Aries and Ivy didn't breed this year, because they both look like they're about the same thing. Well, guess what we found? We found Aries actually having infertile ova. So it's really cool. And then Aries literally took one right out of my hand. The craziest part is what happened next. To be totally honest with you, we just expected Aries to have a bunch of infertile ova because, again, it was just two females and Aries has never been in with another anaconda other than Ivy that's a female. And then mm. noticed a baby sticking out of Aries. And to actually see her give birth to that animal was something that I just never thought I would see. Wow, we have a baby green anaconda being born right in front hey, of us. Lori, I know you're gonna be excited about this. Mm, I don't know, what is this? What is it? Shut the hell up. <laughs> Isn't it crazy? I did not believe it was true. It's true. Are you freaking kidding me? Call her Ariana now, and she had one parthenogenic baby. That's right. That's a baby that's produced without having a male present. It's like a virgin birth. Absolutely wonderful. And for whatever reason, anacondas seem to be kind of prone to that type of thing. So now I ran back into the same situation where now I have two females. One part though, girl. But how am I going to actually breed it? So a friend of mine reached out to me and hey, said, I've got a male named Jazz. To breed Ivy. And to potentially produce a litter. And sure enough, they bred. And then Ivy had 41 babies. All right, guys. I am freaking out right now. Lori, are you freaking out? Are you freaking out? <laughs> am I am freaking out. Look at this. Oh my goodness gracious, guys. Are you are you kidding me right now? Still having babies as we speak. She's still pushing them off. She's underneath the rock, so I can't really see what's going on. What do you say we count how many she has already? Here's one little baby right here. You can see it still has his ability. We hit 40, guys. Oh, this is such a mess. Our 40 baby green anacondas, man. I am freaking out. Let's get out of here. Give her a little break. See if she's going to have some more. And we'll look at the babies outside. I don't even know what to say. This is crazy. Dude. And she just has them. So, Lori, what, what, what do you think? We have 40 baby anacondas, Lori. They ask you how you are. You just have to say that you're fine. When you're not. And a corridor, baby, and a corridor. I can see you now. 40 babies right on there. Yep, growing them up. It's perfect for the expansion. Don't start with me. The babies are here. I know. I never in a million years thought 40 was going to be the number. As a matter of fact, I got to go look at them. Let's go play with them. They were born about an hour ago. What? Yeah. You post pictures. People in the world are right here, right we now. will hunt you down. Like, if you post before the video comes out? Yeah. Oh, if you guys have seen pictures anywhere, tag them in the comments. <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! Ow! Beth! Mommy! This is nice. Husband and wife working together, side by side. Dynamic duo. What? Oh, it got me! This is my first hand of kind of bite. A first anaconda bot. That's okay, babies. It's all right, babies. I know. There's one little mean sucker in here. I think it's probably the one that bit you. Lori can take care of them for the next, you know, year or two until they get big enough to where we can move into the Anna corridor. And that's right, these are the babies that Ivy had. Doing well, some still are kind of finicky, but most of them are doing pretty well, and I love them to death. They're definitely taming out. Remember when they were born, they were little snappy little monkeys? But ow, ow, ow! They are certainly And they would bite you like crazy. You can see they're absolutely getting much better. Every now and then you get a nip. And this happens to be one of the females that I'm actually gonna hold back from Ivy. She's just really beautiful. I love her patterns, her colors. She's one of the prettier ones that we had, so I had to keep this female for sure. I mean, look at how incredible she is. When I have to get the vacuum out with all the hoses, I I gotta clean it, I gotta drain it, I gotta scrub it. Put stuff away, and I come back two minutes later, and there's urates. Like, we cleaned this this morning. That just happened, and it's not even a lot, okay? That's just a little dabble. So 
let me tell you a little quick story. Last week I made this, I cleaned it so good it's spotless. I literally put the one hose away and I come back and I watch Ivy take her butt, run it right down the side and just leave a big old poop. Nasty. Then after she's done, she proceeds to lift her tail back up and just sit there like she did absolutely nothing. Like I didn't just sit there and watch that. And then of course I've got to keep a male too for two reasons. Like I have to keep a pair from the litter. And number two, who knows? Maybe I'll breed this boy back to Ariana or maybe Verde or something like that. You know, I might as well have a pair. And again, males stay a little bit smaller, so it might be nice to have a smaller anaconda and a bigger anaconda. So that's the pair I'm actually keeping back. I absolutely love them. Don't get me wrong. I want to keep all 41, but Lori wasn't gonna have anything to do with that. Come on. Do or do not the anacondas mate. Hello? Yeah. That better be his mom. Do I have the keys? How did you get to work? Oh, Hello? maybe. Yeah. No, I don't have the keys. All right, what the hell do you want, Mike? I was just gonna ask you a simple question. Is the anacondas not the messiest thing? Do we clean up after all the time? It's like cleaning up after a tornado hit a rug. A tomato what? No, 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 a tornado. You mean a tornado? Yeah, yeah. After one of those hits a trailer park, you gotta go clean it all up. Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose so. I don't really clean, so. Just say yes. What was the point of all this? Now here's the dilemma about the hard decision that I have to make. I was actually offered really a dream animal. It's an anaconda, I can't tell you anything about it. I can't show you a picture. I can't even tell you what it is, but I can tell you that I've been dreaming about this anaconda for my whole life and thinking one day, hopefully I can do it. It's a one shot deal, probably will never come up again. The problem is, is that it's a lot of money and you guys know I'm putting basically every dollar I have into the expansion across the street. So I just don't know what to do. If I pass up on it, I may regret it the rest of my life. If I get it. I may regret it because that's a lot of money I could use towards the expansion, but I just don't know what to do. I know that you guys can't really give me that much advice because you don't even know what it is. I'm trying to be very vague and ambiguous here. The point is, is what do I do? Get it and just live with the consequences, somehow try to come up with the money and figure it out? Or do I play it safe and just put all the money into the expansion like I'm planning on doing? And isn't that always the case? An animal always pops up in the worst possible time. And that happens all the time. I'm sure it's happened to you guys where you like maybe want a jungle carpet python, but yeah, the rent is due or something like that. And sure enough, a jungle carpet python pops up and it's amazing. Well, that's the same thing that's kind of happening right now. This is the worst time for me to buy a new animal for a lot of money. There's no doubt about that. But at the same time, an opportunity arises. Sometimes you just got to take it. So I don't know what to do. It's one of the hardest decisions I'm making. I'm definitely losing sleep not knowing what to do. I guess that's all I have to say about that. And maybe here in the near future, you'll see a new anaconda for me. We'll have to see what happens. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, there's a playlist that you can watch all kinds of videos. You can also hit that subscription button. It would mean a lot to me. Also, hit that like button while you're down there. Have a wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember... My arm smells like Cheerios.